Hello everyone. Welcome to the AWS Lambda for the .NET Developer course. First off, I would like to thank you for choosing this course for learning building AWS Lambda functions using .NET. My name is Rahul and I'm primarily a .NET developer and have experience building a wide variety of applications on Azure and AWS. At the time of recording, I am a Microsoft Azure MVP and also an AWS community builder. This course is hands-on and you will be seeing a lot of code. So be ready to get your hands dirty and write some code. Make sure to read the attached one-pager document to this session for relevant links and other important information. During the course, if you have any questions or get stuck, feel free to use the Q&A tab down below here to ask questions and I'll make sure to reply to them. You can also reach out to me using the details on my profile page. With that out of the way, let's learn how to build AWS Lambda using .NET. Welcome again, and let's get started. In this session, we will have an introduction to serverless and AWS Lambda. We will also learn how to set up our environment, which includes the AWS account and also our local development environment, which will allow us to try out all the examples that will be shown throughout this course. So let's make sure we have all the requirements set up before we start writing any code. One of the common misconceptions with serverless is that there is no servers, but that is not true. The only thing is that we don't have to manage the infrastructure or the servers by ourselves. The cloud provider does this for us. In this case, for Lambda functions, it's Amazon AWS that's providing us with this service. AWS Lambda is a compute service and it can be run without provisioning or managing any servers. This is what makes it a serverless compute service. You can take any piece of code and run it as a function in Amazon's infrastructure without having to worry about setting up or managing servers. For the same reason, AWS Lambda functions are broadly categorized as function as a service, in short, FAAS. Before we dive into code and learn more about building AWS Lambda functions, we need to make sure we have our dev environment and tools set up. Firstly, we need an AWS account to publish our Lambda functions and create other AWS services. I recommend having an account where you have full rights and permissions to play around with. If you don't already have one, you can set up a free account using the AWS free tier by navigating to aws.amazon.com slash free. The free tier provides access to more than 100 products and is very liberal with the time, storage and services that you get to try out. I have been using the free tier for all my videos and learning new services. You can set up a new account by clicking the create a free account. Once you have set up the account, make sure to enable multi-factor authentication as this is highly recommended from Amazon. If you scroll down on this page, you can see the different services and capabilities that you get for free for 12 months once you sign up for this account. So make sure you go through the steps of creating a free account and we'll see you soon to set up your local development environment. Now that you have your AWS account set up, let's make sure to set up our local development environment so that the tools and IDEs can also talk with the AWS account. We will also need the relevant support to build these applications. Now, since this is a .NET course and we will be building our Lambda functions in .NET, I will be using the Visual Studio IDE, which is very popular amongst .NET developers. But if you're using different IDE like JetBrains Rider or VS Code, you will still be able to follow through and do everything we do in this course. Only that certain UI functionalities in the IDE might be at different locations. Now you might have to Google and find what is the equivalent in your IDE. But if you want to use Visual Studio and follow along, but don't have an IDE already, you can install the Visual Studio Community Edition which is a fully featured, extensible and free IDE. So you can download this and install this in your local machine and follow along with the course. Once you have Visual Studio installed and set up, let's also make sure to install the AWS toolkit for Visual Studio. Now, this is an extension for Visual Studio that makes it easier for developers to develop, debug and deploy .NET applications using Amazon Web Services. 
we will be using the templates provided from this toolkit and also the ability to deploy to AWS right from Visual Studio. Now, if you're using other IDE like JetBrains or Visual Studio Code, they also have the equivalence of this toolkit. So you can find the AWS toolkit for Rider and install it in case you're using Rider. And for Visual Studio Code, you can find the AWS toolkit for Visual Studio Code and install this and get started. The links for all of these is in the readme document attached to this first session. With Visual Studio and the toolkit installed, Let's connect our local development environment to the AWS account. So let's navigate to aws.amazon.com and click in to sign in to the console. This will prompt you for the credentials and you can use that to log in to your console. Now this console might look a bit different for you if you're logging in for the first time. Now my recently visited are the services that I have recently used. To connect our local development environment to this AWS account, we will need to create a user and preferably attach it to a group. To create a new user, we can navigate to IAM, which stands for Identity Access Management. You can do that by the top search bar and searching for IAM and selecting it from this list. You can see my account already has a few user groups and users already created. But let's go ahead and create a new user and set this up for my local development environment. So let's go into users and create a new user. So let's click add users. Let's give the new user a name. In this case, I will give Udemy dash Lambda dash course as the user. Since this user is to connect our IDE from our local environment, we will need to select the access key and programmatic access. We are not looking for console access for this specific user. So let's select the access key and programmatic access and click next on permissions. In the permissions section, you can add this user to a specific group or you can attach existing policies or you can even copy permissions from an existing user. It's generally recommended to create a group and attach the policies to the group so that you can assign different groups and assign the users to them. Now, in this case, I already have an administrators group, which is why this is showing up here. But let's create a new group from here and assign this user to that group. So let's click create group. Let's specify a group name. So in this case, I will call this as Udemy and let's assign the administrator access for this group. This gives full access to AWS services and resources. Anyone that has this access ID and secret does have all the permissions to this account. So make sure not to share this access ID and secret with anyone else. We will be giving the administrator access so that we don't have to configure this IAM for our local environment every time. Also for real world applications, you will be assigning roles and permissions that usually follow the least privilege principles. Give access to the absolute minimum that is required. Now let's move on with creating the group. So let's click create group. Now this creates the Udemy group and it has attached the administrator access policies. So let's click next to specify the tags. The tags is completely optional. So you can specify this if you want. Let's click review and we can create a new user. So this is going to create the Udemy Lambda user and attach it to the group Udemy. Once successfully created, you'll get the access key ID and also the secret access key. Let's make sure to copy this into our clipboard and also let's copy the access key ID. We will use this to connect from Visual Studio. So let's navigate back into Visual Studio. Let's click continue without code Let's navigate to view and let's select AWS Explorer from this list. You can also use control K and A, which is the default keyboard shortcut. So selecting that, it opens the AWS Explorer. Now, right now you can see the credentials is empty and also the region is empty. With this toolkit, there is an existing bug where the icons are not coming up. If you hover over on the right side of the credentials, you can see there are buttons right over here. Now let's click the first button, which is the add AWS credentials profile, which is used to add a credentials for this account. Now this prompts up a dialogue where you can create a profile name, the storage location, 
an access key ID and the secret key. We can also specify the region that this is associated to. Let's leave the profile name as default because this also allows the SDK to find these credentials without any specific profile name. If you're using a custom profile name, you will have to specify the profile name every time we connect with the .NET SDK. So let's leave it as default and let's move on to the storage location. This has two options, which is the shared credential files and also the .NET encrypted store. Now the .NET encrypted store is one that is available only on Windows. This option makes sure that the credentials is saved in an encrypted manner and cannot be reused across different machines. If you're using shared credential file, this will be in plain text inside our .aws directory. For now, let's leave it as shared credentials file now you can see the location where this will be stored, which is the home directory slash dot AWS and inside the credentials file. Let's paste the access key ID that we copied earlier. So let's paste that. And also let's paste in the secret access key. Now I had copied both of them in the previous step. So if I use Windows V, it will enable the clipboard history and I can choose which of the things that I copied to be pasted right now. So let's click the secret in this case, and that will be pasted into the secret access key column. I will choose the region as Asia Pacific Sydney, because that is the region that's closest to me. I'm right now in Brisbane. You can choose a region wherever you are located in and close to you. Now this really doesn't matter because we will be just invoking Lambda functions throughout our demo examples, but let's leave it as Sydney and click okay. This would have saved it inside the .aws and it is used to connect to our AWS account. Now you can see that it is loaded up all the options inside our toolkit. If I navigate into my users and my current user account, you can see there is a .aws folder. If I navigate further into that, you can see the config and the credentials file inside this directory. Let's open this in a code editor to see what is stored inside this file. So if I go into show more options, in this case, I'll open with Visual Studio Code, but you can also open it using Notepad or any other text editor. Now here we have the default as the profile name. We have the access key ID, which is the one that we pasted from after we created the user and also the secret access key. It also has the region specified, which is AP Southeast 2. That is the code for Sydney region. Since we created it from the toolkit, this also has a random GUID associated with it. If we navigate to the config file, there is the default profile again mentioned here, and it uses the access key ID and the secret key from the credentials file, which is why this is specified in square brackets. Now the region is also specified again here. We are all set up to write our first AWS Lambda function. So see you in the next session.